significant and he would have fancied his chances of getting in the shake-up for the semis so no South African in six Nathaniel though in seven and will race her on the inside for Kenya in lane two arguably among those to watch along with the Barbadian Kyle Gale in four how about that 45 1 8 though from Nathan Allen absolutely effortless right then Michael Francois of Grenada national champion over the 800 meters as well so watch for him coming through late on the 23 year old is in PB shape this year and might need to be again Samson Nathaniel a semi-finalist four years ago on the Gold Coast and made the semis in the African champs in Mauritius could he get close to 45 seconds here today Nene is not there in six, so it's a, a long walk for the camera crew into Ken Reyes, the Turks and Caicos. Season's best of 53 seconds. He's not quite in that PB shape. Certainly what we've seen this year. Kyle Gale then, a PB in Texas, 45.4. The Barbadians are riding high with their 400 meter running. Shade Williams has gone well already today for them and they have Jonathan Jones going in the last of the heats Shadrick Tanzi of Papua New Guinea PB in Saipan earlier this year can he break it again here track is fast and people seem to be enjoying these conditions will that be the case for Boniface Moresa semi-finalist in the world champs in London a former world junior finalist and fifth in the world indoors back in 2016 confirmation that Conte of Sierra Leone occupies the slowest of the three non-automatic spots at the moment just outside 47 seconds Moresa Kenya in two Tanzi oh, no. Papua New Guinea three Gail Barbados in four Reyes Turks and Caicos five a gap then to Nathaniel of Nigeria in seven and Francois of Grenada will be on the outside in eight top three coming back for the semi-finals you can hear a pin drop here in this fabulous arena. A fantastic day for world-class sprinting. Set. Well, Nathaniel's got a good target in Francois outside him. And Gale has already gone past the athlete from the Turks and Caicos. Good running as well by Tanzi of Papua New Guinea trying to get in the mix and stay with the Barbadian. They're coming through on the inside. Moresa. Nathaniel around about second place on the outside, but it's the Kenyan on the inside. And now the real work begins. Francois of Grenada trying to get back in the mix for a top three. The Barbadian is struggling. This is good running by Moresa. Easing down at the line. Moresa takes it just inside 46 seconds. Nathaniel and Francois are the other two qualifiers. High hopes for Gale of Barbados, but he faded down the last 50. Tight lane that for a big, strong man like Boniface Moresa. But that was an excellent piece of qualification by the Kenyan from lane two. It was. I'm still recovering from Nathan Allen, the Jamaican in the previous heat, which was mentioned about 5,000 times of how impressive it was. But that was a competitive heat, wasn't it? Moesa, as you say, Rob, in lane number two, big Q, 45.91. And as with every sprint race at every big major championships, you only get to really see the full deck of cards and what an athlete's got at the semi-final stage. And the semi-finals are on Friday as I've mentioned for both the men and the women in this 400 metres before the finals on Sunday morning. Seema Waiser though making his way nicely down the back straight. The Nigerian was moving nicely in lane number seven. But in the sunshine, automatic qualifying done for those that we expected in that third heat. And the Kenyan was blowing a little bit, puffing out his cheeks there at 300 metres. Effort wise, maybe six or seven out of ten he ran the first 300 nicely and I said this many many times you have to execute the first part of a race whether it's a hundred meters or a 400 meters set yourself up then you can shut down 
Well, I think that's what he did there, and the Kenyan will be happy with that. Only he'll know how much effort he really put in, of course, Rob, but it looked pretty impressive, didn't it, there? 45-91. Yeah, it was a good run, and that's a, that's a horrible lane for him into the Papua New Guinean athlete. Tanzi went out really fast, and that certainly helped, although he faded in the closing stages. Nathaniel, another big, strong competitor. I thought he might come under pressure from Kyle Gale, who studies uh, in the United States, but the Barbadian was just beginning to fade. Marisa was home and hosed, and it was a good last 25 metres. I did say that Francois Grenada on the outside has got excellent 800 metre strength, and I think that's what got him the third automatic spot. Yeah, very good speed endurance. Sprinters step up with good speed and get endurance. Little distance runners drop down and try and get the speed. Not Grenada's number one, of course, that's Karani James. But that was a good piece of running and good qualification from those lining up in heat number three. And that strong finish, as Rob Walker said, from Michael Francois on the outside line. Got him that third position in a lifetime best of 46.35, so well done to him. But a nice little lean back from the Kenyan there, Rob, nice and easy. Yep, part one of his mission is complete. He's got himself into the semis along with the likes of Cox and Allen from Jamaica. Solomon, the former Olympic finalist, is there, and so too is Boniface Moresa. bring the official confirmation of that shortly but the results still yet to be forthcoming so we'll keep a close eye on that just in case there's any retrospective disqualifications we're not expecting to see any but we'll we'll mop that up in due course but uh, the unofficial result Marisa took it Nathaniel and Francois were the other two qualifiers with Gale in the mix for a non-automatic spot and there's someone who should get a big response from the home crowd on his home track with a big, bright bronze medal in his hand luggage coming back from <laughs> Eugene. Yeah, Matt Hudson's with. Although, listen to this, that uh, bronze medal run in Eugene was 10 days ago. It's uh, not long ago at all. I just do wonder whether or not with the jet lag, the long haul travel back from the uh, west coast of uh, the Pacific Northwest of the USA, the celebrations after that bronze medal, Matt might be carrying a bit of fatigue coming into this one. We shall see. He has had a remarkable season setting the uh, UK record, a long, long-held UK record by Ewan Thomas, uh, improving it by, was it one one-hundredth of a second back on uh, the 28th of May when he came third at the Prefontaine meeting. There's Joe Breyer of Wales. He will go in lane two in this uh, fourth heat of seven. Commonwealth uh, silver medalist over the 400 hurdles back in 2002 was his coach, Matt Elias, who has uh, another charge in this race. Ah, so that's why we've had a little bit of a delay confirming the result from Heat 3. A real shame, despite his fast-starting heroics, Tanzi of Papua New Guinea has been disqualified, but that doesn't affect the top of the leaderboard. is still through, so too Nathaniel and Francois. Gale will have to wait and see whether that time is good enough for one of the non-automatic spots with a very quick heat to come. <laughs> 